look at um, cycling their iron intake according to their menstrual cycle. So low hormone phase, every other day, first thing in the morning. What are the key considerations with supplementation for women? Um, you've obviously written a lot about creatine and the importance of creatine for women, something that I think traditionally men have used, maybe women haven't because of potential adverse effects, you know, some nausea, water retention, bloating, other things that might make it unattractive. But what are the other key supplements women should be considering? I'm thinking as well, um, iron. Collagen is the one that everyone seems to be raving about at the moment. What's your hierarchy of, of needs when it comes to supplementation for women? So I always put creatine first, right? Because it's so essential for just general health and then also some um, like exercise performance benefits. For iron, I always talk about the fact that women often sit on the low end of normal. And so they're never actually going to get help from their physician. So they can look at um, cycling their iron intake according to their menstrual cycle. So low hormone phase, every other day, first thing in the morning when hepcidin is low, then after ovulation, because we have this immune system change and pro-inflammatory responses, we also have an uptick in hepcidin, harder to absorb iron. So if we're trying to get above that low end of normal, we have to look strategically at how we supplement. But I don't want women to just blanket supplement because too much iron also looks like, or has the same symptoms as being anemic. Um, I often recommend certain nootropics, so adaptogens. So I tell women who are premenopausal looking for the use of rhodiola. Rhodiola is a really good way to counter cortisol, counter high stress situations, and allow you to get into more parasympathetic um, activation for sleep. And then for women who are perimenopause to postmenopause, I talk about ashwagandha because it's a stronger kind of adaptogen that works on so many different layers of stress. So those are the two like nootropics with creatine. And then um, I often talk about DIM, which is uh, kind, of a, a, kind of a side factor from cruciferous vegetables, but it helps with estrogen metabolism. So people are having really bad migraines or they feel like they're getting a lot of bloating around ovulation. Using DIM dampens that because it modulates estrogen metabolism. 